John, thank you very much for joining me um, for this interview. Today. You're very welcome. Um, I'd like to start by asking you, within your work and, and your work at um, Roger Stark Harbour and Partners, what does the term adaptive reuse mean? Well, the term adaptive reuse for us really means looking at existing buildings and understanding if you can reuse them. Um, I think it also has got to do with designing new buildings, designing them in a way that they're not entirely tailored, let's say for the brief of today, because we know the brief of today will evolve during the evolution of the project, let alone once we've finished. Um, and we've had several exa examples of that over the years where, where buildings that we have designed have been able to survive and go on and be readapted and reused are things like Lloyds of London, who were able to adapt to the, the, the kind of explosion in computer use, where buildings of a similar age designed at the same time as Lloyds had to be demolished because they simply couldn't be modified. Um, so that's what adaptive reuse means for us. It's kind of loose fit and long life for a building. And building on that, I'd like to ask, why, why do you think that's important in architecture rather than simply demolishing and building new purpose-built buildings mm. when, when you know, the kind of original functional um, life of, of a particular structure has become out of date? Well, I, I think it's probably a, a twofold answer in that, in principally, the amount of um, money and time and embodied energy gone into a building, it's just simply irresponsible to take something down if it doesn't exactly fit for today's purpose and try and rebuild it for a new brief. The world is moving and changing so quickly. Actually, buildings in many ways struggle to keep up. Um, and I think you see that with some of the, um, the advances even in work, workplace uh, usage now and kind of collaborative working and the kind of office spaces that, that Google and, and Facebook um, are designing that almost by the time they're designed, they're out of date mm -hmm. because the workspace has already moved on. Yeah. And therefore, if we continue to insist to try and make buildings that are, are really tailored to a specific function, I think we're kind of chasing an end goal that we'll never really achieve. And therefore, if we can design uh, a, a flexible framework, if the building is a framework, and give lots of flexibility inside that, not only for change of use in something relatively standard like office terms, although that's obviously gone through a great revolution in the last 10 years, um, but across all sorts of things. We're currently looking at a building that could be a life science building or could be an office building, depending on how the development moves forward. And so you need to think in much broader principles and allow flexibility um, within the design, within the MEP, within how the building is structured, um, to allow it to change over time. And I think that's really important. When we were first at the British Museum, which is the building we'll probably principally talk about today, every room that we were taken to had four different names or four different uses. And there was two in particular, I remember, called Crasher Road in Palestine. They used to be libraries, they used to be public, then they were private. Then one had turned into a kitchen um, and one had turned into a storeroom. And uh, so I said, but why is it called, why is it called Palestine? And so, well, they, you know, we used to exhibit objects from Palestine here, and you're looking around this really ordinary little storeroom. And so then they would go from a conversation like that to say, now we need this room to really specifically do this singular task, and it needs to be a certain grid and a certain whatever. And you try and strip away all the requirements of the, the grid or those kind of the, the almost pre-adaptive um, ideas to what the solution might be and say, well, what are the basics of what you need? And how can we look at that in more broad terms and then maybe put that room adjacent to another room that to you as the, as the scientist might not be natural, but to us as um, designers of space work quite well together. Um, and so I think that's a huge part of it. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.